Okay, so there it is. So at the end of your uh, review, right past question 29, can you guys jot down question 30? Quick factoring question. Again, something similar will be on the test when you guys take it Tuesday or Monday, you guys that are home. And I know it's only going to be one question on the on the test, but I want you to be prepared for everything. All right? I do not want you to hand in your test and say you didn't prepare us for this question or this. So here you go. Huh? All right, you ready to tackle this? This is just factor. That's it. Just factor. Okay, no solving or anything. Just factor it. So I I'm not going to ask you to factor. Don't worry. I just have a couple questions for somebody in here. Ready here? All pumped up. Okay, here we go. I, I already know, but ready to go, Nick? Yep. Okay, my first question for you, Nick, is sorry, let me put it back up. Is any GCF? Because I always have to look for a GCF first, right? No. No GCF. Yep. How many terms are there? Three. Three terms. Everyone's in agreement so far. So usually you think grouping. But there's a little issue with what I put up on the board, and that is there's X's and Y's, two variables. Not a problem, Nick, because what's the number out in front? One. One. Guys, when you're dealing with three terms and the number out in front is one, you can do the whole multiplies to this and adds to this, as long as the number out in front is one. And that's what the game I'm going to play with somebody now. Multiplies to your C, adds to your B, as long as the number out in front is one, which I have. So I'll put my y's here, so I get y squared. So you guys come up with the numbers I need now, based on what the numbers you see in the problem. What are my two numbers that I'm looking for? Multiplies to this and adds to this. What are those two numbers? Oh, look at you guys at home. Isaiah, my boy, here we go. Um, Do you know what you're trying to multiply to? No. What's the remember? What's the last term? That's always what you're trying to multiply. Negative twenty-four. Though. Negative twenty-four. What are you trying to add to? Two. Oh, negative two. So t when you get to those numbers, let me know. It wouldn't be twelve. No, no twelve and two won't give you two in the middle. Yeah. Keep thinking of numbers that multiply to twenty-four. Eight multiplies to twenty-four. Three. That's when you get to two. Nope. I'm completely drawing a blank right now. You're better than this. Eight and three don't work. Twelve and two don't work. Come on, I'm not giving up on you. You don't give up on me. No, I know. I, I'm just having a brain fart right now. I have no idea. You want me to spot you a number? Yeah, could you? Six. Six. Six times four. All right. Not off the hook yet because you got to put signs with them to add to a negative two. So negative six and then positive four. Okay. Good. Thank you. That That's not correct though because what variable am I still missing? X, right? So how am I going to get 24X squared? You can't just put the six and the four. We got to put what with them? X is with them. 6x, 4x, yep. And that's how we deal with that problem. Treat it the same way. All right, Isaiah just gave you two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 2. The only thing I got to remember is, oh, wait, the problem had x's in it too, so, so they're the numbers I need to plug in. You don't have to work. Don't worry about anything else. You're good. Don't worry about anything else. Everyone all good? Bless you. Anything else? Don't worry, we're not going to freak out. Other questions? Guys at home all right? Some of you guys at home, another stay at home day for you, huh? That's nice. That's nice. All right, go to 18 for me. And I promise, just like I said yesterday, I'm not going over much today, and the rest of the time is yours to work. 
but I want to make sure you guys are good on how to solve something like 18 versus something that looks pretty similar to it in 16. Okay, so let's go over 18 first. I'm not going to do it all the way. I just want to start it with you. 18. Hey, guys, 18's got an equal sign. And it says solve for x. So at the end of this problem, you should have x equals, maybe another x equals, depending on how many answers there are. Get x by itself. All right, for the start of number 18. So you got to get rid of all those denominators by getting a common denominator. One denominator is x, the other is x minus 2. Common denominator? If it, well, it's more than x minus 2. It's got to be both of them multiplied together. Okay, you got to represent both of them. So ready? Watch. If you don't know what I'm talking about. It's going to be x times the other denominator, x minus 2. Just put them together. All right. Make sure you multiply the second fraction by that as well. And anybody want to tell me anything else? Yeah, you got to balance it, guys. I know the 12 doesn't have any variables or fractions with it, but it's got to get some love too. All good? Find the common denominators. Get them out of there. All right, what's going to be left in the first fraction? You can just tell me. You can go all the way. You can tell me what's crossed out. I don't care. Just tell me. Help us out here. Hi, Ella. Here we go. Um, so it's 12 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 18. Thank you. Oh, hold on, Ella. Let me just ask your classmates. Everyone all right where Ella got that? She crossed <laughs> off the X's and distributed the 9 here. Okay, nice work, Ella. And then you want to keep going? Go ahead. Um, yeah. And then plus 9. Missing something. Plus 9X. There you go. Plus 9X. Because the X minus 2's cancel. Uh-oh. I'm going to I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm going to do it, Ella. Come on. Now, you have everyone see she's got three things to multiply. 12X. I'm talking. Settle down. 12X and X minus 2. Just do two at a time. What's the easiest two, Ella, to multiply right now? Um, negative two and x. Like, you got the 12, right? Yeah. You got the x and you got the x minus two. You got three things to multiply, right? Mm -hmm. 12 times x times x minus two. Out of those three, which two are pretty easy just to put together right now? 12 times x. Yep, so you get 12x and you still got to multiply it by what? x minus two. There you go. Questions there? Okay, and then I'm gonna let you guys finish this whenever you, at the end of class today, over the weekend, whatever, guys. But you mold, distribute the 12x, you're gonna have something that's squared, you can't factor unless. One side equals zero. One side, you're on fire today. One side, did you have your breakfast today? Yeah. What'd you have? Cream cheese bagel. Yeah. What type of bagel? Uh, I don't know. Plain. You don't know? I don't know. There's that's that's baloney. My mom. Everybody. Oh, that's cute. Actually, that's poppy cute. seed. If that counts. Poppy. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty I I have to go poppy or sesame myself. Poppy. Yeah. Or, the people that are everything. You're just. The Trader Joe's was really good. Everything. No, you're just. Something else. Good, you're just something else. If you're if you're an everything bagel person, you're just you you might not. It's so gross. It's, it's so it gross. smells disgusting, and your breath afterwards. I've never had it, but my wife loves them. Let me tell you, your breath's on fire. Okay, and it takes a and it takes a while to get back to. No, I don't. No, I don't. I hate onion to begin with. So. Out the window. Oh, so you probably don't like everything yeah. but the bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's. Oh, that's so good. It's so good on eggs. Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. Aldi, now we're getting out of control. Anybody else want? Anybody home here want to throw out another bagel that they enjoy? Any, I was going to say cinnamon raisins usually pretty popular. Cinnamon sugar. Oh yeah, yeah. Brugers. Brugers. I got it. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's, that's a, but see, that's more of like a dessert bagel. Yeah. 
Like, can you have that for breakfast? Blueberry. It's kind of like, have you heard it's like the, in between. Oh. The, no. the like veggie cream cheese. Just stick to blueberry muffins. They have the, the veggie cream, cream cheese. cheese. See, I'm not, oh if I had, like, I would just go plain. Nothing on the bagel. Or peanut butter on the bagel. Nothing on, I, if I had to, maybe I'd throw a little smear of butter on, but no cream cheese for me. Oh, no. Like cream cheese and peanut butter, I don't do. I know you guys at home are just enthralled right now. You're just like, let me teach. Come on, let's go, please. Anybody else want to throw in a bagel before I move on? Okay, that was a good talk. We don't have to do math all the time. All right. All right, so you got, I'm going to let you guys finish that on your own, 18. Okay, you guys can finish that on your own. Uh, get one side equal to zero, look for a GCF, and go from there. Okay, and check your answer, remember. Okay, check your answer. Next up. Go to number 16 for me, because 16 is done just a little differently. Do I need to get the phone sleeves back no, sorry. out? Just like the old days, all right, and treat you guys like elementary school students. All right, still, oh, still up there. You can have your own personal one all to yourself, Katie. All right, all right here you go. 16 is done a little differently. Do you see an equal sign? No, me neither. I'm not asking you to solve for X. I'm just asking you to combine those two fractions. So do not get rid of the denominator. Find the, com find the common denominator here. What is it? X, X times X minus, X minus 1. Leave it. Leave it. See the difference? On this one, when you were solving for X, you had to get rid of the denominators. Here, you keep the de common denominator. Still multiply, though, by the common denominator. All right, what crosses out? What's left? That's still the same. Here you go, 16. Kian, here we go. Bagel boss. Let's go. Uh, you can cross out the x minus 1. And what's left? 3x. 3x on top. Now be careful. I know I, I can't fool you, but go ahead. I'm not going to say it. Distribute the negative 2. Yep, x and x are gone. Distribute a negative 2, everybody. Negative 2. Negative 2x minus, or negative 2x plus 2. Yep. I'm, guys, I'm just trying to show you, keep your denominator when you combine them. When you're solving for X, get rid of it. Okay. Two distinctly, they look the same, but totally different of how I go about it. And then yes, finish up everything and say X plus two over X times X minus one. All right. That's the only thing I was worried about is when you face those two types of problems on the test. Okay. Everyone all good? Questions? Okay. Uh, the other one I wanted to do with you was 27. I just want to review our rules for horizontal, vertical, y-intercept. Twenty-seven, everyone, and I'm just going to do part A, and that's it. I'm out. Okay, 27, uh, it says write the equation for the horizontal asymptote, okay, horizontal asymptote. And guys, I'm going to do horizontal, vertical, domain range, and y-intercept all on 27A right now, okay, just so we can cover it. It's the last question on the test. I asked for all five on the test, last question. All right, here we go. Let's start with horizontal. You got to know the rules. I believe they're on, somebody check me on this, page 22. Page 21 of your packet. I can't remember. Sophia, what do you have? 22. 22, got it. Page 22 of your packet. What you need to look for to figure out what the horizontal asymptote is, you got to look for the highest exponent in the numerator, highest exponent in the denominator. So somebody do that with me here. Oh, here we go. Kian, you ready? Yeah. What's the highest exponent in the numerator? One. One. What's it in the denominator? One. One. So everyone go to, if they're both equal to each other, which I believe is choice C on page 22, how do I determine the horizontal asymptote? You divide the numbers out in front if they're equal. So Kia, what's the number out in front in the numerator? Three. Three. And the denominator? Negative five. No, 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 no. The number out in front? One. One, right? I got a three and I got a one. Divide those and you get what? Three. Three. So it's Y because it's the horizontal one equals three. three.
Okay, everyone good? All right, the other two are the other two scenarios which you can look at yourself on your own. All right, ready? I'm going to add in a couple other things like I promised. Range, let's go to the range now. Range. I asked for range because it relates to the horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote, I wrote it up here. Horizontal asymptote and range go together. They go together. There's a relationship. So if my, sorry, if my horizontal asymptote was y equals 3, what's the range then? y such that y cannot equal 3. There you go. Those two are always related. Okay? Next up, I'm going to ask for the vertical asymptote. Anybody remember how the, not the trick, the way you find the vertical asymptote? What makes the fraction undefined? Undefined. So everyone look in the denominator right now. What value of x would make this fraction undefined? What number would you plug in for x to make it undefined? Here we go. Seven, Will? Five. Five, yep. But remember, I don't write the number five. X equals five. Good. What makes it undefined? I'll also ask for the domain because that's related to the vertical asymptote. Domain X such that you guys tell me if you've already found the vertical asymptote. X does not equal to. Five. Yep. Remember, hey guys, just remember the relationship. Yeah, just remember the relationship. Last one, because I'm going to ask five questions on Monday or Tuesday. These four right here. And what's my y intercept? What's the y intercept? Remember how to find that? You plug in the zero for x. So it's going to be zero, comma. Whatever you guys find out what it, when you plug in zero into that fraction, what's it come out to be? Zero. Should come out to be? Zero. 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 So it goes through the origin. Yep, zero, zero. I'm sorry. Okay, everyone all right? And again, guys, am I going to come over and take your calculator away during that question? No. So if worse comes to worse, graph it. See if you can find where the vertical line would be or the horizontal line and go from there if you forget all the uh, ways to do it. Okay, I'm not going to take your calc away from you. Okay, anything else for me? Because as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm good. So here's what's going to happen right now. You guys are going to stay online. Work through whatever questions you want. Okay? Make sure, guys, don't skip over the questions that I told you weren't going to be part of the test. Like the first page is all factoring. Is there a straight up factoring question? Other than the one I just showed you today, this one here, like number 30, no. But you guys know darn well, you're going to have to factor the heck on that test. You're going to factor like heck on that thing. All right, so you better know all the methods of factoring. All right, so just don't skip over them because I told you not, you know, you didn't star that one because it was going to be like on, the, it wasn't on the test. All right, you guys at home, don't be bashful. Unmute your darn mic if you got a question for me. I'll do the problem with you. You guys here, just wait, raise your paw. I'll come right over and uh, we'll talk about it. Okay? Do not waste your time here. You got 29 questions. And I did go over with you guys yesterday. We went question by question. And I said, mark this. This is similar to the one on the test, right? Okay. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why would you guys be doing problems if you don't know if they're right or wrong? Remember, under classwork, unit one, might want to get it open now. Unit one, homework answers for the week of September 28th. Open it up. And you will see review for test answers. All right, why do problems when you have no idea if they're right or wrong? Okay, go right ahead. Ask me any questions you want, guys.